I love psychopaths, so I'm very intrigued by it. He knows me well. I do like books with killing and death, but it is... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with a big book haul of 33 books because I have depression. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. I actually probably do. But as I'm sure everybody is aware of, it now gets dark at 4 o'clock and I go to work at 6 a.m. and I get home at 6 p.m. So I am in constant darkness and that brings on the sads, which means we don't we don't film anything anymore. So it's finally bright out because it's a snow day today, which means I get to stay home and not go into work because I work out of school. So we're finally going to film the haul video so I can put all of these books away and actually start reading them and, you know, have a little bit of serotonin in my life. So without further ado, let us get started. Okay, so the first stack of books are books that I either bought or my friends or family gifted to me. The first book that I have is one that I was very excited about to find in my thrift store because it's a very, very popular book and I found it for two dollars. It is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is the first book in her Truly Devious series. I want to say there's four books now in this series. I could be very wrong on that, but this is a very popular murder mystery kind of situation. I've just heard really good things about this series, so I'm very excited to actually have it on my shelf so I can actually pick it up and be a part of the hype. The next book is actually one that my boyfriend just shoved into my hands and was like, look, I want you to read this because it has a lot of killing and death in it. He knows me well. I do like books with killing and death. It is Killing Floor by Lee Child. This is the first Jack Reacher novel. I saw a Jack Reacher movie with Tom Cruise a long, long time ago, and it was okay. I enjoyed it, but we gotta read it because the boyfriend wants us to, and you know, we gotta keep the boy happy. Will it happen anytime soon? Probably not. Hopefully he forgets that I have it. Next up I have three books that I bought on Facebook Marketplace. The one that I bought off of my friend is Reckless Girl by Rachel Hawkins. I actually gave this five out of five stars when I read it last year. I saw that she was selling it. I live pretty close to her so I was like let me just come on by and snatch that off your hands. Now I have it. I'm very excited to have it on my shelves just because I loved this book. I know that a lot of people were very disappointed with it but I thought it was so much fun. So, I recommend this book. You might hate it, like everybody else, but I was going off of pure vibes. And then the next two books I bought off of a random person, but they are V.E. Schwab's The Near Witch. Literally only bought this because it's V.E. Schwab, and I like her writing, so I wanted to add to my collection of V.E. Schwab books. And the next is Bunny. This is by Mona Awad. This is just a very popular book. I think this has something to do with a cult. And I'm a big fan of cult books. It's about this group of girls at like a college, I want to say, but they all call themselves Bunny. And I think murder happens. I honestly don't know that much about it, but everybody seems to love it. So I want to be on the bandwagon. Next up is another one that I found at the thrift store for only $2. So I was very excited of when I found it because I had actually been looking for it because I heard great things. But it is Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Korean. And this is like a psychopath book. I love psychopaths. So I'm very intrigued by it. I honestly have seen a lot of people haul it, but not a lot of people read it. I don't know if it's any good, but like I said, we love me some psychopaths, so I'm here for it. The next one I found at the thrift store again for only $2, and I believe that it was 50% off day, so I actually only got it for a dollar, and when you see this book for a dollar, y'all are gonna be like flying high like I was, but it is The Iron Widow in hardcover for a dollar? I've already read this book. I gave it a 4.5, I believe. I really enjoyed it, so when I found it for a dollar, you know I had to snatch it up. But if you have not read The Iron Widow yet, highly, highly recommend. It basically follows a girl who's 18. Her name is Etienne. She becomes a pilot of the Chrysalises, which is a big machine that basically battles aliens that are in China. It's a very male-powered career. Usually there's a male and female pairing and the female is usually sacrificed to have the male become more powerful. She actually becomes the more powerful one in her pairing, so it's like unheard of. But anyways, it's very good. I definitely think that you need to read it if you haven't already, but I feel like you have because everybody has read this book, but it's so good. Next up is one that I bought from Costco. So this is the most expensive book and it was only like $14.99. It is Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This is like the spin-off series of our Violent Delights. I think that's what it is. But it's the first book of that spinoff series, and it follows one of the side characters in that series. 
a lot of people have hauled this not a lot of people have talked about it well, i've read the first book i gave that one a 4.5 out of 5 stars i own the second book and then i just saw this and i was like i need it next up is one that my lovely friend molly sent me for my birthday i believe but it is the ballad of never after by stephanie garber this is the second book to the once upon a broken heart series i read that book gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Really loved it. And she really loves Stephanie Garber. I really love Stephanie Garber. So she sent it my way. Thank you so much, Molly. But I'm very excited to see where the story continues. It's like the spinoff series of Caraval, which I freaking loved. I gave, I'm pretty sure, every single one of those books five stars. So very excited to have this in my hands. Thank you so much, Molly. I love you so much. And you guys should all buy Molly's new book that came out a couple days ago, which is about um, having sex with Jack Frost. So if that sounds like a, it's up your alley, then, you know, go check out her Amazon page. I'll leave it down below. Then I have two more $2 books from the thrift store. The first is The Shadows by Alex North. I don't think that this is, like, the sequel to The Whisper Man, which was their debut novel. I gave that one a 3.5. It does have a very similar cover, though, so I'm not 100% sure. I am too lazy to look it up on Goodreads right now because my phone is all the way on my bed charging right now. So... Let me know down below if it is the companion or sequel, because I don't know. But it's along the same lines of like thriller, creepy, there's children involved, so I don't know. And then I also found The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. So this follows a woman who creates potions to use on men, and I hope that it's violent potions but it could be love potions. I'm not really sure. But it's about this this store that sells these potions and the woman who owns it, Nella. This is another one I saw hauled a lot, not really talked about. I will not be one of those people that just hauls this book and you'll never see it. I'm going to read it, I promise. Then we have a book that I was sent an e-arc of a very long time ago and I just never opened it. But I found this in my Dollar Tree for $1.25, so when I saw it, I was like, might as well pick up. But it is Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anns, and I love this cover because she has purple hair. And if you were an OG subscriber to this channel, you know I used to have purple hair, and it was like my whole personality. It brings back the nostalgia, you know? This is definitely not my usual style of book. It's a sci-fi, which I don't really read that much of, but when I do read them, I give them like a 3, a 3.5, but you know, a $1.25 book. We, we had to pick it up, and it's my favorite color of purple. It's lavender. Like, <laughs> I needed it. And also, I just think the end pages are really pretty, so... I just, I needed it. Next up, Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. It follows nine strangers who receive a list with their names on it, meaning that they're probably gonna die, so we love a thriller with killing in it. And then the final book that I actually purchased myself is Legion by Julie Kagawa. This is the third book in the Talon series. I own the first two, read the first one, gave it 3.5. Second one I still have, have not read it, but it's a series about dragons. You can never go wrong with dragons, so we picked it up because we saw it. Okay, next up I have a stack of arcs that I was sent by publishers. Um, a lot of them are very old because again, I'm sorry, I didn't film for like three months because the sads hit. So we're doing it now, I'm sorry. The first one we have is Made of Stars by Jenna Voris. It says that it is inspired by the lawless love story of Bonnie and Clyde. It is a heart-stopping tale of passion and crime and it follows two renegades who take shady interplanetary relations into their own hands. Oh, it's not out yet. This one comes out March, 2023. So we're not too far behind with this one. Next up, another March 2023. Maybe we aren't that far behind in these. Okay, no, a couple of them were, were behind, but yeah, it's fine. We're just gonna go with it. But the next one is Chaos and Flame. This is by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. I recognize Justina Ireland's name, so that's fun. This says it's a, a book about sworn enemies. They are bound by a prophecy. Oh, an orphan set on revenge for the murder of her family. A war prince who despises battle. In the land trapped in endless violence, their only option is to embrace the chaos and they ignite the flame together. Oh, I'm kind of into this. It looks like it's also about dragons and phoenixes, so I'm actually very intrigued by this now. I'm very excited to pick this up. Okay, next up, this is one that we are behind on. It came out in November, so we're like a month behind. It's fine. It is How to Extravate a Heart by Jake Maya Arlo. It has a corgi on the cover. If you know anything about me, corgis are my favorite. This is a sapphic holiday romance, so it is perfect for right now. It's like the end of December, two days before Christmas. I believe that I actually have this on hold on audiobook at my library, or I might already have it loaned. Not 100% sure, but this is like perfect right now 
for the holiday season. So we're gonna throw that over there and we're gonna read that next. Okay, this is another one. We're a little bit behind. This came out in October 2022, but this is Anywhere You Run by Wanda M. Morris. I know this is a thriller book. It says, after the murder of a white man in Jim Crow, Mississippi, two black sisters run away to different parts of the country, but can they escape the secrets they left behind? Intriguing. We love a thriller. We love murder. Are the two sisters the one who murdered the man though? That's what we need to find okay. out. Okay, this one, we're not that far behind. Actually, we are, we might be behind, but I'm not sure how far behind, but it is. The Last Invitation by Darby Kane. This came out December 2022, which is this month. So it, it doesn't say an actual date, just December 2022. So who knows? Maybe it's the end of December and we're still on track. This says that it is a gripping and twisty suspense about an invitation to an exclusive club that comes with deadly consequences. Deadly consequences, exclusive club, somebody's dying. I'm excited. The next book is actually on my December 2022 TBR anyways, so I've already talked about it, you've already seen it, but we have to haul it. It is Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sambury. This one, it comes out February 2023. It's about a girl who gets broken up by her boyfriend, and then her mom inherits a secluded mansion in Northern Ontario, so they end up moving there. There's a little bit of supernatural being sprinkled in there, but then it also follows a girl a decade later that stays at this house, and she's starts investigating what happened many years ago to this little black girl in this house. So I'm assuming the first girl is the little black girl that the second girl is investigating. I haven't read it, I don't know, but Jesse from Bowties and Books has started reading it and they say that it's very, very good. So we're gonna get to this soon because it is on the December TV. All right, next one, January 2023. So we're not behind yet in this haul. But it is 7% of Roe Devereux, and this is by Ellen O. Clover. So this follows a girl named Roe who is able to predict your compatibility with somebody through an app that she coded. And when this app goes up viral, she is matched with her best friend, Miller. So she enters a fake dating relationship with Miller, but the only catch is, is that Miller hates her. We don't know why he hates her but for some reason he's hating on her. I'm assuming it's like a publicity thing for this app. I'm assuming they're gonna fall in love. It did say it's a slow burn romance, so. Sounds cute, sounds like a good palette cleanser. So. Next is Forget Me Not by Allison Derrick. This is the co-author to She Gets the Girl, which I read this year or last year, I'm not 100% sure, but I really liked it, gave it four out of the five stars, so I am very, interested to see what her writing is like by herself, but it says, what would you do if you forgot the love of your life ever even existed? Which is a crazy thing to think about, so I'm definitely intrigued. I also think that the cover is really cool. I don't know if this is going to focus, but there's like two girls in the other girl's hair, and they're like falling, so shit, shit is happening. It says that it is a romantic ode to the strength of love and the power of choosing each other against odds and obstacles again and again. So clearly it's some soulmate shit. If that's your thing, this might be for you. This one comes out April 2023, so now we're really not behind in this all. And then the final one I have for the arcs that I was sent is Vamps Fresh Blood by Nicole Arend. This is an exciting new paranormal series that transports you to an elite vampire academy where a half vampire, half human must hone his bloodthirsty side in order to survive in a cutthroat world. Perfect for fans of the Atlas Six and True Blood. And then the final stack I have here are finished copies that I was sent by publishers. So thank you so much to those publishers for sending these my way. This is probably the stack I'm most excited about because there's some gems in here. The first one being <laughs> Legends and Lattes by Travis Balder. I have heard so much about this book. It's about an orc who moves to like this little small town and opens a coffee shop. The only problem is nobody has ever heard of coffee before in this little small town. She meets this one. I don't know what she is, an elf, an imp, a something. She's something fantasy-wise, but they fall in love, and apparently it's so cozy and so cute, and I'm so excited to read it. But it also came with little stickers! And are they not the cutest thing you've ever seen in your entire world? I'm Next so up excited. is Bet On It by Jody Slaughter. This too came with stickers. I love when books are sent with little goodies. I don't know what it is about it. It just gives me so much serotonin, so thank you romance book follows these two characters. It has anxiety rep in it apparently, which is great. It follows these two characters. The love interest is the main character Bingo Buddy's grandson, 
and they end up developing a sex bingo card or something like that. I don't know. It sounds very funny. It's a rom-com. Next up, I was sent Winter Keep and Sea Sparrow by Kristen Kishore. These are books four and five of the Graceling series, which I adore. So when the publisher said that they were going to send them my way, I all but freaked out about it. I'm so excited to finally finish this series because I've been waiting to find copies of them because Canada books are like $35 here. Like this book costs $35, okay? Your girl doesn't have $35 to just hand out. So now they're in my possession. I'm so excited. So excited. The next book I was sent I am also very excited about. It's The Atlas Paradox. This is the second book to The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This one came with a little pin and it also came with some artwork which is really cool but like I said this is the second book in the Atlas 6 I'm not 100% sure if it's a duology or it's going to become a series but now that I own both of the books I can binge it and I'm very excited to jump on that bandwagon I really hope I like this book next up I have pretty little pieces by Carmen Schober this follows an influencer named Georgina who is dating a very famous designer they are deemed the next power couple in Nashville they constantly flip houses but then he hits her with the, we should take a break. So Georgina decides that she is going to flip a house by herself and then she gets a troubling visit from her twin sister and shit hits the fan. I hope that the twin sister did something really bad, like murder somebody. Is that gonna happen? Probably not. And I believe that an ex-lover comes into the picture as well. So. The next book I have is The Second Death of Edie and Violet Bonds by Amanda Glaze. This follows twins who are psychic. Their mother ends up dying and then their father says that he is going to commit them into an asylum, so they decide to run away. They end up starting their own show where they, you know, cross over to the spirit world, so they talk, you know, you know medium shows, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, one of their shows goes very wrong and things go down, so I am very intrigued. This cover, gorgeous. Next we have Ocean's Echo by Irvina Maxwell. This is like a space opera. That's really all I know. It's the author of Winter Orbit, which a lot of people in the sci-fi world really loved. So this is a standalone though. I was a little worried when it showed up in my mailbox because I was like, oh no, I haven't read Winter Orbit, but it's a standalone, so we're okay. But it says, at the edge of the universe, a powerful captive and an unwilling weapon of war are plunged into a world of violent ambitions and deadly conspiracy. Their survival depends on their connection. Their bond will change the fate of worlds. Next up is Hold You Down by Tracy Brown. That rhymes. This follows two sisters who have always been inseparable, Mercy and Lennox. They have two sons and they live in New York City. Lennox heads down a path that she believes will bring success and power and it changes the entire course of their lives. As a result of their mother's choices, the two boys soon find themselves in uncharted territory. What that means, I don't know, but I want to know. Next up, I have The Spare Man. This is by Mary Robernet. Kowal. It says that it is an interplanetary mystery. I've never read one of those, so I am definitely intrigued. There's a murder. There's also a dog. Two of my favorite things, so I'm excited. The next and final book that I was sent by a publisher is Mary John. This is by Anna Paseo. This follows a woman who writes a long letter to Julio the pirate, who she shared a plot of land growing up, so it's her reflections on childhood and teenage years on this little square of land. I don't know what that means. I am definitely intrigued because like, is he a real pirate? That's what I would like to know. All right, everybody. So that was uh, all the books that I have not hauled in like three months because of my sads. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.